Boy, do I have a crazy story for you this week. Uh, and, and this story is the story that maybe many of you are familiar with. It's the story of desperation. Um, I got there in an interesting way. And so I was reflecting to myself, what is TRBM? What am I responsible to myself for in creating what sometimes feels an awful lot like a podcast journal that I share with the world? Um, but something that I want to be more, something that I want you to be able to learn from, have some takeaways. Uh, I try to get better at giving you concrete takeaways, things that you can do, things that you can practice. I don't know that I'm always great at it. I don't know that it's the way that I think. I don't know that I think as systematically as all of that. So perhaps one day I'll be able to hire somebody who can help me to get better at the systematic delivery. Um, but essentially, it is still my hope that all of my blunders, all of my successes, all of my creative ideas will spur you on. Uh, I can't imagine any other reason you're listening for those of you who tune in regularly. And thank you, because there are many of you who do tune in regularly. At times like this, when I have a crazy story of desperation to relate to you, I wonder why are you coming back, you quiet many you. I see you downloading. I see you listening. I see the statistics. I love it. I am grateful and appreciative uh, with so little thought into weekly shows that build on each other. I've done a few series. We've done like the library series. I think we've done the travel series. We've done the in-person book shows. Never quite as systematic about that, but I've tried to do some series. A lot of times my solo episodes are of the moment, what's happening to me right now. And this episode is no exception because I just spent $10,000 and had to chase a refund. This is TRBM, a podcast for authors who are serious about earning a full-time living selling books to readers. I'm the host, Jody J. Sperling, and each episode, I'll share with you practical tips on marketing and selling your books. And I won't hold anything back. Sometimes I fail. Every time I do, you'll know it. Sometimes I succeed. And when I do, I'll give you my step-by-step -step replay so you can succeed too. Thanks for listening. That's right. I spent $10,000 with a company that I'm not going to name. And first off, I want to say that I'm in the middle of the refund process right now. I don't know what they're going to do, if they're going to refund the whole amount of money or if they are going to refund a portion or if I'm stuck with it and I have to make lemons out of really, really, wait, lemonade out of really expensive lemons. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they will refund me. Um, but I had to write back and be like, hey, uh, my life experience right now had led me to a place where I just started to count the beans as they are and realize that if I'm going at this current speed, I will hit some kind of tipping point where my books are read by enough people to make me a name in the industry by the time I'm about 197 years old. We need to move faster. I've pulled back on my uh, meta slash Facebook and Instagram advertising a little bit. I have a $10 daily budget. And that is because, well, desperation. I hadn't been succeeding. I had been having some troubles. I'd been failing to get my books in front of enough people at a cost-effective level. So I saw this ad uh, for a program that I thought seemed really cool. I had a great conversation with the person and um, I'd been going through all of the personal things that I discussed in previous episodes I'm not going to bring up. So I think I was in a pretty vulnerable place and I decided, what the heck, I'll take this swing. I have the money for things like this if I deem them necessary. But as soon as I started into the program, it was really quickly evident to me that the content inside was not worth the squeeze. Uh, I got through some videos. I, I thought I've learned all this stuff. I've actually podcasted on this stuff before. There's nothing new or unique here. Um, and one of the things that I've done quite a bit is if I go through a program and I see that it looks like there might be something, I go ahead and sign up and try to refund if there's nothing on the inside. I haven't been burned by that before, but I've also never taken this big of a swing. So um, does that make me some sort of like masochist, unethical jerk that I sign up for programs and then ask for refunds? I don't think so. Um, you pay less 
to sign up for Russell Brunson's Funnel Hacker. And there is way more there. Uh, and so I signed up for that and realized like they couldn't teach me how to make ads. And so I got my refund from Russell and his team. And I feel fine about that. Um, he's making plenty of money. I think that this person that I just signed up with is making plenty of money. And I don't believe in my heart that any of them are trying to be fraudulent. But I also think that there is a real sense of um, this is a this is going to come back on me. I think what happens to us is that we realize we have something good. We know we have something good, uh, and we know that we have determination to get something good in front of people. But as we pursue our thing we realize that it is so difficult to get that thing in front of people that we try to find substitutes to fill in the gaps. So what happened for me is that I envisioned creating this podcast uh, way back in the day called Create Collaborate. I think I was being clever and I spelled that C-R-E, the number eight, C-O-L-L-A-B-O-R, the number eight, Create Collaborate. I thought it was really cool. Eight, if you just tip it, 90 degrees is the mark of infinity. Wow. I was really high on my own supply. I, most of the time, I am pretty high on my own supply. I, I have like this ego. I get really excited about how clever I am. I make lots of mistakes from that place. I also am fairly dauntless. I don't quit very easily. So when I get knocked down as of late, I find my way to stand back up and keep going. I think that that will eventually be the ingredient that gets me where I'm going. But when Create Collaborate did not start to build a natural audience platform for my fiction, then I started to wonder, what am I doing? My podcast isn't growing. People aren't listening to me. So I tried to make an authority of myself by writing the seven-figure marketing mindset for novelists and talking about some of the things I'd learned along the way. There are some valuable tips and tricks in there, but even as I was writing that book, it became oh, so abundantly clear to me that I did not have enough information on how to actually make seven figures on my writing that I really honed in on the quote unquote mindset. And I'm going to deliver to you one practical application for yourself. The only thing that I promise I know from experience, and that is, again, if you don't quit, you can't lose. Uh, this is not a game that has an end. You can't win this one, but you also can't lose it if you continue to play it. If you continue to play, you can't lose. Now, what I'm learning lately and what I could learn very painfully if I don't get my refund from this current program is that certain decisions you make can force you to quit or at least strongly change your tactics and pull back and retreat. There is uh, a way that the American army could have lost the American revolution yay back in the days of George Washington if they had run out of people power. We could have lost, uh, the North could have lost the Civil War if they ran out of people power. There are finite amounts of resources that we all run into. And if we're not careful about how we use those resources, we can get in trouble. I would say more often than not, people use their resources too sparingly. I would say if you can't recover from a very expensive mistake, then you probably don't have every ingredient you need to make it where you're going. I had one really expensive mistake that I should have asked a refund for, and it has created me to be the person that I am. I have specifically named this one because I think that it's specifically preying on a certain kind of person, and I had enough collabor or corroboration. I have collaboration too. I had enough corroboration that this program was not helping people that I've named it before. No need to name it again, but I spent $7,000 with them and I never even asked for money back when it was painfully clear I'd been defrauded. So yeah, I guess those are the reasons why I do what I do. This particular one to me feels like I should have known better because even when I was in the conversation, I would ask specific questions about like, you know, what is it that you think I could do with, with book marketing? See, the real trick here, folks, is that Book marketing is unlike any other product you market, especially when the book is the product. You have people out there like Alex Hermosi. I've been mentioning him a lot lately and devouring his content. He writes really good books. I love $100 million leads and $100 million offers. I think both of them are fantastic 
books. I think that I have read them enough times that I've pulled a lot of great information out of them, but it still leaves this gaping hole in the entertainment world. I'm four books into a nine book series and every single day lately, I find myself thinking, boy, it would be great if I had some central location for all of my notes, all of my plot points, character names, family lineages, you name it. I wish it was in one place because let's be honest, the way that I am using Microsoft Word as a word processor and have 55 different documents to keep track of all of the series details that I need to access, I'm taking more time opening up files wondering, why did I name this one that? Why did I name this one that? And not getting the information I need. Enter Scrivener. You guys know that I do not advertise for things unless A, I'm using them myself, and B, I think that you could up your game, sell more books, do better marketing, and get yourself in the game better. And that is why I am now partnered with Scrivener. If you use the link in the show notes, you get a 30-day free trial, and then you can sign up as well for a discount. Click the link in the show notes to learn more. And so if you are somebody who's trying to sell an entertainment product, um, a couple of things are true is that there is never going to be a pain point on entertainment that there can be in a lot of other industries. Um, if you get my newsletter, you saw recently that I had uh, spoken about the Jawser size. If you're not familiar with Jawser size, they're like these little rubbery things that you can just put in your mouth and you chew, and it's supposed to strengthen your jaw bones. Um, it opens up your nasal passages. It can straighten your teeth. It can reduce like headaches. It can stop snoring. There's all kinds of stuff that it's supposed to do. On the downside, some people say it might cause TMJ. Um, and like that it's a very expensive snake oil. Um, <clears throat> trusted scientist in the area, Andrew, Ho Andrew Huberman, says it works. I tend to think that he's done his research enough that I believe it works. So I'm using the jaws or size. I'm using the mewing technique of putting my tongue on the roof of my mouth. Things that you don't need to research. You can if you're nerdy like me and you like to research these things. Um, there's a pain point there. For any man or woman who snores, and it is a uh, either a source of sleep deprivation that makes them tired throughout the day or causes their spouse or significant other a degree of discomfort. For any person who has that pain point, if someone gets in front of you and says, hey, I have a tool that will cure your snoring, I bet you that you're pretty close to purchasing. And then if they can give you a little bit of social proof and some exciting stories, you're ready to go. Now, <clears throat> As of yet, I have not figured out what the pain point is that is great enough when you talk about entertainment. Sorry about the train in the background. Also, if you hear my voice, I've been sick for a little while. Um, and so it's kind of like scratchy. I think I sound a little bit like RFK Jr. right now. Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, <laughs> this is a, I'm getting into the any rate point of the podcast. Um I can't find out a pain point for fiction. I've never, never been able to do it. Uh, I know for my wife that she reads romances because she actually finds them to be uplifting. They are emotionally uplifting. They're kind of an escape from the hardship. She can listen to them while she's doing dishes. It feels good. They're very predictable, the ones that she's reading. She knows that the two people are going to get together in the end. They're going to have some, some sparks and, you know, all of that good stuff. And then end happily ever after. They're going to be quick in. They're going to be quick out. There's a formula that she loves that is solving a kind of pain in her life. It, <clears throat> romance sells. It's the best-selling genre out there. It's the one genre where you can almost guarantee that if you can write the books and get them coming and, and just have enough money to put romance in front of readers, you're going to do okay. Other genres seem to be a little bit more difficult. Am I making excuses? Probably. I've been doing this for a while and I can't figure out the key so I can't bring you a, a podcast episode today to tell you much new, except that there is one thing that is working for me, and it is the most expensive thing that I do. That is traveling and doing in-show book sales. It works. I'm profitable on just about every one I did. Uh, I think I mentioned at the head of this episode, but if not, I've traveled 
three times in the last three weekends. I started in Columbia, Missouri, and I followed with Tulsa. And then this last weekend, I was in Milwaukee. Uh, I was in Milwaukee with my good friend, Rich Hosek, the host of Bedtime Stories for Insomniacs podcast. It is always fantastic to do events with him. He made this really great banner. We look more professional. Thank you also to Heather O'Brien for uh, being kind of the inspiration for the graphics on the banner. We're looking forward to doing more shows as hashtag writers. I think it's going to be great. Um, but at any rate, we were there. You make about half as much money when you go with somebody else. That's the truth. And you don't pay half the expenses. So that's something I need to start figuring out the key for is that if I travel eight hours to get to Milwaukee um, and I make half as much money, then I just barely am profitable. And that was the case this time after the supplies and everything. I was just barely profitable for my trip to Milwaukee, but I got some new readers. Um, and the same is true of every week. The problem is, is that if you make, say, $800, which is what I made when I went to Columbia, I made $800 of book sales in two days at the show. That translates at three for 35 into, um, well, you, you can do the math. That's 10, 20, about 30 new readers. So that's 30 people who are going to read my book every week. If you multiply 30 by 52, the number of weeks, then you pretty quickly realize that's 1,500 books or 1,500 new readers and 4,500 books. That's not great. So you have to find ways to get more readers in between, or by the time you catch on, it's just not going to be possible. Now, mathematically, the interesting thing is, is that most of us, if we were making 800 bucks a week, could scrape by a living. Now, I, I do have to take expenses out, yada, yada, so on and so forth. So maybe it's a pretty spare living. But if I were doing that every single weekend, I could probably scrape by. I could probably do okay. And that would be true. My assumption is for anybody who has three books, who knows how to sell and get in front of people, you start to learn which shows are good. Maybe you start to go to better shows. Maybe instead of going to an $800 show, you go to a $1,600 show, double the amount of sales that you do over a two day period. And you can pretty quickly start to double your revenue, figuring out which shows those are, who knows? And why did I say it's the most expensive? Well, not only does it cost me $100 in gas to get there, plus how much ever the, the, the show table is, typically you're, you're looking at about $300 of expenses, um, plus the expenses of the books themselves. So let's just do easy math. And we'll say that I make 50% profit on my books. It's actually more than that, thankfully. But if I make 50% 50 50 profit, then I have... $400 of profit from the show that I have to then take the less expenses other than the books themselves. And you can see, I now have a hundred dollars left over hundred dollars a week. It's $5,200 a year. I'm living well below the poverty line. Um, even if we're a multi-income family, most likely. So you got to figure out how to get that number up. It's very expensive. And what's the greatest expense? Well, if you're married, if you have kids, you're going to be away from your family just about every weekend. If your spouse works five days a week, then you see her for a couple of hours, him for a couple of hours uh, each evening, and then you're gone when they are off work taking care of the kids for you. It's expensive. It's very expensive. It's worth it. I'm going to continue to do it. I am booked out uh, for shows every weekend in March, uh, all but one weekend in April, already booked for several shows in May, June, and July, also September. And if I can book more in between now and then, you bet I will. I will have as many weekends booked as I can. Hopefully, I'll get to take my wife on some of these shows. Hopefully, I'll get to take the kids during the summer that we can like pack in a little bit of experience having. And you always hope that you will get to that turning point where things start to uh, like reverberate out from just the shows, building relationships, meeting people, who knows what the opportunities are. But the one thing I can tell you where you can actually make money as an author is to go to shows. Um, I'm going to be focusing a lot here. I think at the moment, I'm going to continue to spend a little bit of money to build my email list. I'm going to spend money trying to figure out how to get my email list to respond to the things that I email them. And as I discover things, I'm going to send those out to you. In the meantime, in the meantime, I'm going to seek to try to get guests onto this podcast, and I'm going to seek to be more formulaic, more formatted. Um, formulaic might feel like the wrong word here, but what I'm saying is I'm building a list of questions that I'm going to be asking. 
Um, and the guests that I'm currently speaking with to bring on the show, there's one really big guest who isn't booked yet, but I think you'd be really excited to hear from him. Obviously, we've got Stephen Pressfield coming up soon. Um, there are some people who have tons of experience in this area. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get people from outside the world of entertainment or at least selling books for entertainment to get them to literally throw stuff at the wall with us. See, what is a mind that has been exceptionally successful in their field think about when they think about trying to sell a novel? What what are the things that would get them to buy? Maybe we can learn a ton. So I am building a list of questions and we're going to go far outside of the fiction writer's realm. We're going to go far outside of the self-published author's realm to talk to people from lots of different industries and try to apply their specific knowledge in how to sell novels. Because what I can tell you right now is that with very few exceptions, I'm not finding that there are a ton of novelists out there who know how to replicate what they do to be successful. And so I want to try to find best practices that maybe it can inspire you to try new things and do new things. It feels like I'm running out of voice. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode today. Um, I'm recording it literally right now. You're going to be getting it somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 minutes from right now. So if you happen to listen today, fresh off the presses, I am currently sick as you're listening. If it's any later than the 14th of February, then belated happy Valentine's. And we'll talk to you again next week. Thank you for listening to TRBM. The theme music was provided by the ever-talented Christopher Talon. And hey, if you liked what you heard, share this show with other readers because what's the point of telling stories if nobody's listening? What is author marketing mastery through optimization, you ask? I'm going to tell you. It's the best way for us authors to make a living selling our books. Are you tired of hearing gurus tell you your book is only good enough to be a lead magnet for services? Are you tired of feeling like you have to be a slave to social media and then frustrated when the time you spend doesn't actually help you sell books? I was too, until I found Ammo. Ammo is the only program that reliably produces results and it works for anyone. Is it hard work? You bet. Do you have to overcome some of your own prejudices to make ammo work for you? Absolutely. But rather than being another program that rah-rah shishkoom boss tries to get you emotionally excited only to offer unclear methods, ammo shows you how to design profitable ads step-by-step through a unique, highly tested and targeted formula. The founder, Steve Piper, is a data-loving, formula-driven author who escaped the kingdom of Amazon to build a platform for himself, where he sold directly to his readers and built a loyal following and millions of copies sold. With Ammo, you know who's reading your books, how to contact them, and what they want to read next. If you've always been frustrated with Amazon's wall of mystery of not knowing who's reading your books and losing 50 to 70% of your hard-earned money, that you're making through sales. Ammo solves all of those problems by putting you in the driver's seat and showing you how to fulfill your books directly to your readership. Click the link in the show notes to learn more.